Now, following the recent unrest in some part of the African continent overtaken by the military power, the Director General of the Nigeria Institute of International Affairs, Professor Ehosa Osage, has blamed the incessant military roles on the Sahel region on extremism interference. Professor Odage was of the view that Nigeria has earned the credibility to lead in exemplifying democracy since the end of the country's military rule. Jacinta Obuku has more. What is the world without its second largest and second most populous continent, Africa? Let's talk about African politics. And you will agree with me that with the recent wave of coups in some countries, there is need to begin to raise questions, concerns and conversations as to why and how to tackle the deep-seated menace in Africa. Throughout the ages, there have always been ups and downs with democratic regimes in Africa. But the continent has also tasted and recorded successful democratic rules to date. Take Burkina Faso, for instance. Rock Mark Christian Kabori was elected president in the November 2015 general election, winning a majority in the first round of voting. Upon taking office, he became the first non-interim president in 49 years without any past ties to the military until now. More worrisome is the reaction of citizens to the recent military takeover. The jubilation and celebration among citizens of these countries could suggest the fall of democracy and acceptance of military rule. We had an exclusive chat with the Director General of the Nigerian Institute of International Affairs, Professor Ehusa Osage, on the reason the dirty political games in Africa have persisted. He linked the crisis to the extremism in the Sahel region, but opined that it was not enough reason for military overthrow. The people are at the receiving end, you know, of these um, of these atrocious, you know, situations. Um, but, you know, does that then warrant the military um, taking control unconstitutionally of the reins of power? I'm sure that, you know, those who have had the experience of democracy and the experience of authoritarian regimes, especially those associated with the military, know the difference. In Chad, under the Chadian law, the Speaker of Parliament should have become president, but a military council stepped in and dissolved Parliament in the name of ensuring stability. In Guinea, Special Forces Commander Colonel Mamadi Domboya led a coup in September 2021 against President Alpha Conde, saying he acted because of poverty and corruption in the coastal state. And in Mali, the coup followed weeks of anti-government protests over rising insecurity, alleged corruption and a failing economy. Professor Osage pointed that international organizations and civil society have a great role to play to ensure this country's return to constitutional order. One hopes that the major powers and all of these international organizations that you know, have the interests of these countries at heart would engage you know, civil society and not state forces. A country like Nigeria, having returned to civilian rule on 29th May 1999, is arguably not perfect. But according to the NIIA boss, Nigeria still has the credibility to show other countries in the continent the way to go in making democracy work. Nigeria's moral authority has been strengthened and enhanced by the democratic you know, um, stability that the country has enjoyed. And Nigerians themselves realize you know, that in comparison to non-democratic regimes that we had in the past, you know, nothing really compares. It's, it's, it's democracy. And so when Nigeria has these kinds of interventions, uh, the interventions are with very strong conviction. Um, and you know, Nigeria um, has the credibility you know, to say to people that this is the way to go. On his final words, he said no conversation to cop crisis without the proper involvement of any country's citizenry will make sense.
we must look inwards. Uh, we, must, we must engage the people, we must engage civil society. Governance is no longer simply the monopoly of governments only. There are notions of co-governance. We must also find out what these people want. And I think the experience in Sudan has taught us very well that you can no longer take the people for granted. The thrust here is that though the quality of Africa's democracies are uneven, shallow and compromised, however, it could get better when all hands are on deck. Jacinta Ubiuku for Plus TV Africa. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.